Hello, welcome to the Cytology New Call Podcast with Chief Angel Sanchez Rice. And I know you all loved his last interview and discussion. This is a series, this third one. And uh, so I'm going to ask him a more discussion to just to learn from me. So Chief, thank you for coming on the show again. Good morning, Adi. Thank you for inviting us again. It's a real honor, actually. And uh, really thank Dave and your wife and Andrew and Richard Gordon for helping us. And David. Us. And David. <laughs> I, I call him Dave. Dave, so, yes. Yeah. They're all wonderful people. Amazing people. And the best thing I like about meeting you and your family here, we are, think we are part of your family. Thank you. And I'm, I'm myself with you. Yes, and, and you are. You're part of this family, for, for sure. <laughs> Thank you. So tell me a little bit. I want to go deep into the... So the first discussion was about the socioeconomic issues we face in this country. And this discussion, I want to really go delve into knowing about the culture. Because there is a... I see in my calculation there are five billion people on this planet who are connected to their native roots, indigenous mm. roots. And that makes it majority of the population of the world. Only three billion people are connected to an ideology which is different from the native indigenous population. So tell me something about your, how in your uh, culture you connect and preserve this earth. Oh, uh, first of all, um, to continue from the last uh, part that we did on the first podcast, uh, we gave you the introduction of the native uh, situation. Now, we're, uh, we'll talk about, like you just said, um, where we're at now. We're connected in, in the culture, and how do we keep a culture going? Education, reaching out, uh, talking to people, uh, trying to get people more involved, not just in what we do, but in our powwows. Uh, teaching people about uh, the, uh, about the land, how to preserve it, how to take care of it, and uh, I, I think that's what you you're after. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the other thing is, uh, on on as caretakers of the land, we try to educate people how to take care of it. <coughs> you know, growing your own fruits, and vegetables, uh, using it for medicine. Not because uh, we use a lot of uh, my wife grows almost everything so she has everything we need at home pharmaceutical companies are exactly that they don't want you to use that so we use our own medicine so uh, and so when you teach that other they teach other people and it just becomes a situation where everybody knows how to start uh, fending for themselves mm -hmm. and not depending on other situations uh, or are and, and as far as being caretakers of the land we take care of it by doing these things, growing our own food, sharing it with others, taking care of the land by not destroying our land. Uh, you see trash, pick it up, we pick it up. Because, you know, if, if everybody would throw trash everywhere, how, how would this place look? So we try to teach people to respect your land, love it like we love it. That's why we're, it's very important for us to get that message out. So I, uh, you mentioned the word powwow. Mm. And many of the viewers will not know what is powwow. Powwow is a gathering of uh, native uh, native people, uh -huh. and it's not just one group. It could be various people. They get together, and they do dance. They do songs. They do uh, vending. They have uh, people out there selling the product, like blankets, baskets, books. Uh, it's it's almost like a like a uh, like like a uh, uh, like a uh, what's that called? Uh, where they sell fruits and vegetables, like a farmer's market. Uh -huh. It's something like that, but just imagine it with people dancing, people singing, all regalia out, the Native American uh, you know, wear that we have is called regalia, and just having a good time, and we invite the whole community. It doesn't, it's not just a Native thing, it's a community thing. Everybody's invited, and they teach basket weaving for the kids. Uh, they have Indian food, Native American food, they have it there, so it's pre pretty good. Sometimes, like when I read a lot of books I've read, read on uh, encyclopedias, also I've read on the Native American culture and different tribes, Sioux, Ojibwe, 
Chichen, Chichens, and Chihens, and then Comanche and Apache. Mm -hmm. well, I see a common thread across all the communities, common thread. And the uh, common thread is like uh, respecting the sun, respecting the moon, respecting the, and all, all your, you know, you had those uh, owl clouds you showed me mm -hmm. in your house, and a fan, the first time I met you, you showed me how you use the sage burning mm -hmm. and to purify the atmosphere. Right. So, how are th are these things common across all the native communities? Or oh yes, it's a, it's a practice that we have. It's our religion. It's a way to uh, cleanse ourselves, cleanse our homes, and cleanse others. And uh, it's important that we sage. We sage ourselves, sage our homes. It's very important that we continue those practices. We all have different religions. We all come from different backgrounds. But the native religion, our beliefs, are very important and is very sacred to us because it needs to continue to go on. That's what keeps us safe. That's what keeps us rooted down to who we are as a native people, is, is uh, the, 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 what's been passed down from the older generation down to us. And we've got to pass it on to the younger generation. And those are some of the things that we teach at the powwows. Like I, I was reading following social media nowadays on Twitter, and I see a big movement on social media where many people and some of those people I want to call them on the channel if they're watching then do come mm. and uh, want them to come and I, I will walk through with you and and your leaders everywhere in the different native communities across USA uh, not just here and also in Canada so when you when you look at the culture here how is the youth how is the youth connected to the native uh, uh, the native youth or just the in native general? youth and everybody also but okay. but the lot of Americans love native culture I would say that I would give them credit also uh, well uh, the native youth uh, they're if you're living on the reservation then you really don't know what's going outside of the reservation unless you go up but then you go back right um, if you really want to know more about how the youth are living inside the reservation and outside just go to uh, uh, let's see. It's called the um, interview of the of the uh, interview of Pine Ridge Reservation in the Dakotas. That's the interview of Pine Ridge in the Dakotas, and it's going to take you into the reservation. It's going to you're going to see the young people. Uh, Ninety-five percent of the people they talk to are young people. You're going to see what's going on at the reservation, and then you're going to see how what they're experiencing when they leave the reservation and most of them don't come back. But when they go, when they leave, they're kind of lost. So that's where we come in. We try to guide them. Uh, we have very good mentors to, to help these kids. One of them is, uh, you're going to meet him right now, David Trujillo. He's our ambassador for the tribe. And what he's done, he's put a wonderful program uh, at, at the House of Pain, which is connected with the tribe. And he's helped many, many, many young people also, he has uh, an interview on YouTube where all the people are just so, not just the parents, but the children are so happy to have him as a mentor and as a guide. He has done so much. I'll let him talk about it. I want to brag about him, but I'll be here all day if I brag about him because he's done so many wonderful things for the youth. We'll just pause for a second. Can you move the camera up, slightly up? Slightly more, more. Perfect. That's it. Thank you. So one of the things which I was uh, reading and I wrote in my book also, there is a thing known as the colonizers, they first bring and replace the culture, introduce the religion. Our religion? Uh, no, the, the process of colonization is like, uh, from my side, what I have seen is that first they come absorb the culture mm. and then introduce a religion mm. and then eliminate the culture that religion becomes a culture gotcha. this is a process happened all over the world like you whether you talk about South America Africa Asia and here also right a and so how do you think that the the culture because I what I'm seeing is the culture mm -hmm. I'm seeing you using your uh, the the process of purification mm -hmm. as a cultural element. 
-hmm. But the religion is totally different. It's like a belief-based system. Mm -hmm. So how do you say? Uh, well, you, you know, uh, people call God God, right? We have the same God, but we call him Creator. And uh, what we teach our children is to uh, and what learn. What's the name of the Creator? Well, what do you say the name? Uh, uh, just Creator. Mm -hmm. We call him Creator. And what we do is we. Uh, because he did create everything, heaven and earth and the stars Absolutely. and everything. Yes. So we give him thanks because he gave us the moon, he gave us the stars, he gave us the water, he gave us air. It's the four directions. So when we do the sage, you know, purification or we pray, we pray to the four directions, and, uh, which is water, a land, a sea, and air. So because if without that, we wouldn't have life. True. So we give him thanks for that. And we have, to, and what we do is to show our gratitude, is we take care of the four directions, which is what our life, what, what life is all about. We teach that to our kids. We teach also that uh, in our culture, is we need to respect everyone, especially our elders. Our elders are very important in our culture. If you see an elder, you, it's totally nothing but respect. You see that here in this gym. All the children that come here and young adults. Uh, they have so uh, uh, the, the most ultimate respect for everyone. Yes, sir. No, ma'am. Those are the things that David teaches as ambassador of the tribe. He teaches what we teach in in our society, and uh, and I'm real proud of him because he's carrying on our legacy to do the things that uh, we need to teach as a whole. So, so the important aspects for any society to sustain are economics. Very important. Economics is very important because economics sustain the society? Uh, um, economics and for us is like, again, we're, uh, uh, we're a, a, a solvent tribe. We don't want help from any federal agency at all. Uh, that, that's something we have had as a solvent tribe. Um, we maintain what we want. If, uh, we, if we want to work real hard, we can. If we want to become successful in life, we can. There's nothing holding us back. Uh, my brother David, uh, you know, he's here with the gym. This is his. He's part, and he's part of the tribe. He represents our tribe through the gym and what he does. We have business owners, corporate owners. Uh, we have nurses. We have attorneys. We have doctors that have gone to college and made a success out of themselves. So that's what happens when you're allowed to become to become a successful person in life and not learn to depend on any form of agency or government because then your hands are tied. We don't tie anybody's hands. We encourage people to get out and seek your dream. There's an old saying, uh, you know, there's, I, had, uh, I have uh, my son, I'll use him as an example. He was asleep and I said, hey, what are you doing? He said, I'm sleeping. That's when he was younger. And I said, no, wake up. I said, don't waste your dreams. Get up and chase your dreams. And that's what we try to teach our children. Go chase your dreams. Don't sleep them away. So those are, that's, uh, uh, that's food for thought for them. You've got to push them. You've got to push the narrative to become successful. Now, uh, what I've noticed, like uh, speaking to many people, and, and I have been connected to, them, to the business side of USA in a much more, in my previous avatar, Mm -hmm. Then I was connected more to the business side and I saw so much wealth being generated in this country, so much, especially the Silicon Valley. And, uh, and, and now I'm meeting you and after, especially after my book, Gold, Glory and God, that's, that's when my heart changed completely when I did the research about this country. And I'm seeing a different country altogether. And I must admit that that uh, when we in other countries talk about the love of their land, which I have not seen in any other community in USA more than Native Americans, mm. indigenous American Indians. Because the, these people, that, that really gives me goosebumps also when I mm. see that. Because that's where the important part of the culture is, that you love your land with your, and the, the outcome is, you know, youth and you can go on statistics also how many American Indians and Native Americans have served in the U.S. Army mm. right from World War One? I, I would say European War One and European War II. All and right. we were dragged into those European wars. So in those wars also we have seen significant contributions right from whisperers 
and even the helicopters, Comanche, Apache. Yes. You know, all these missiles which are, we, we are flying, most of them have native names. Yes, they do. What makes it, like, why the, why the U.S. military uses native names? Where you have nothing to do with that war. Uh, Created by the Europeans first. Because they believe that the, uh, that, the, uh, that the American native culture has a lot of power you know, and a lot of influence. So they use Are they trying things. to bring in validity to themselves? I'm sorry? Are they trying to ma bring validity to themselves? I don't think so. I think, I, I think it's, it's, just, uh, it's just one of the things where people are just trying to use the, the, our culture uh, to make it so maybe uh, stronger, because it is strong. When you use names like uh, Geronimo, when you are uh, Apache, Comanche, when you use those names like that, it's a, I mean, they, it's a strong meaning. You feel that because you know the history. You know the history behind the Apaches. They were the strongest warriors were the ones that, the, that, uh, that uh, invented guerrilla warfare. And everything they did, they were fighting people with guns and cannons, and all they had was bow and arrows, and they still succeeded in their battles. So we have a long history of being warriors. So when you use names like that, it's just like, uh, it's, in, my, in my thought and in my feelings, I think it's pretty, pretty awesome that, that it's, uh, it, they give us that kind, of, uh, that kind of thank you. You know, most of the viewers may not know that uh, many of the cities in the U.S. are named after Native Americans, Seattle, mm -hmm. Charlotte, and the coffee brand Starbucks is also a Native mm -hmm. name. Yeah, and, it's, it, a lot of companies use them. Because again, the, not the, because of the meaning behind it, mm -hmm. you know, it's very impressive. So, what, uh, I mean, it says there is a saying that the that the brave inherit the wealth. Mm -hmm. Brave inherit the wealth, and the brave are the people who determine the future of a nation. Very common, and I can see that. But there are other elements also, which I will come back again. Because you mentioned about when I, because I, I really want to see that uh, a balance is there, where I am a nobody. I am just a writer and you know, author. Sure. <laughs> but <laughs> what I what I want to see is the economic side, mm -hmm. and the in the diplomacy side. Because in this world you don't get anything by asking. No. In this world we get things through negotiation. You get Work. what you negotiate. You don't get what you ask. So, and especially in dealing with the Anglo-Saxon communities, and mm -hmm. I've studied the history right from, right from uh, Saxons in Europe to Anglo-Saxons in UK and then coming back here. Correct. So how do you see that developing further? Because now you have full experience of Anglo-Saxons oh, yes. over so many years, at least 500 years, I can say. And now we have to come in a different sphere of the world where the youth is empowered with social media. Um, well, there's a lot has been done uh, since um, since all this started with uh, with the takeover of, of our country uh, from, and, and pushing out the Native Americans to different corners of the United States. Reservations. And uh, and we've we've gone through a lot with uh, with wars and and massacres and whatnot. Now, from that time to now, I could say that uh, we have learned how society really works with not just the Saxon community but with all cultures. But what we have learned, what I have learned, is that what has happened in the past. I, I can't really speak too much about it because I wasn't there, so I can't blame people for what happened back then. I could only educate people about how not to replicate the the uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the mistakes of the past, because if we don't we don't move forward, we're always going to have uh, we're always going to have uh, that big separation between between our cultures, and we're trying to bring people together. So we could work together, and so we could better not just us, but better our country as a people working together and trying to make things better, not just for us, not uh, for our children and generations to come. You know, I, I have I might have 15, 20 years. I don't know, uh, but I, I want to pay you longer. <laughs> 30. Thank you, but I I, I want to make uh, I want to take advantage of the time, and the time I'm trying to 
and that's educating people. That's what I wanted to teach people uh, how to work with one another. We have a program right now, and, uh, and uh, 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 we have uh, our, our congressmen and other officials working with us where we want to work with the kids. So uh, we're trying to start a program. Uh, it's, it's for the youth. So if they graduate high school, this is for all, not just Native kids, it's also for all kids, whoever wants to participate. You know, they clean up graffiti, they clean up the streets, they get a certificate from our tribe, and then they'll get a certificate from uh, our, our congressmen and our assemblymen, take pictures with them, they'll get a, another certificate, certificate for them. So when they go ready, ready to go to college, they have this really nice resume. And kids that do community service for the community actually get bumped up a little bit when they're ready to go to college. So we want to help people, kids, get ready for that. But we want all kids to get an education. Why? Because uh, uh, a mind is a terrible thing to waste one. And thing, knowledge is power. But we want these kids to learn the real American history, not just what they have learned in school, which is European. They need to learn really American, a real American history. And who's going to teach them? It's going to be our, the Native community because we know the stories. Our families and our ancestors have lived those stories. We're here to share that with them. All you have to do, ask us. We'll tell you, we'll give you real American history. European history doesn't matter to me because all, they, didn't do, they didn't contribute nothing to this country, not the English or the Spanish. All they did was take and destroy a lot of resources. everything. A lot of resources. Yeah, so now we have to teach the kids the real story. If, they re if people really knew our story, it would be devastating for the people to really understand and try to gravitate. That's what really happened. Yes, that's what really happened. And, and I think that's why people are really gravitating towards the Native American culture because they know the they know the suffrage that we have gone through, and we're here not to take advantage or to take vengeance. That's not what we want to do. No. We want to help them to understand and to become uh, more connected to the Native community. I wish Anglo-Saxons ever understood the logic and reasoning. Uh, no. It's, kind of, it's worldwide, I have not seen that. Well, that's because you have to, in order to feel the way we feel, you have to have to have gone through some kind of experience to, to understand um, that pain. I've gone through it. I'm sure you have. A lot of us have, and that's why we're here. It's not. We're not here by coincidence. We're here because something brought us here together. If I can ask you one story for the audience, yeah. which will which will convey to them what really happened to Apaches. One story, and I'll make a whole series on those stories because I want it to be recorded and communicated to the youth. So. If there's one story which you feel uh, can really tell people the extent to which things have happened to you. Well, uh, the, one, uh, the one story with, my, with Geronimo, my grandfather, and the story I have about him is um, when he was out there, uh, he had left his, 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 his wife uh, behind and, uh, and Asul and his children and his mother Juanita and him and the warriors went out to go get uh, to go get supplies. When they came back, the whole village was wiped out, and it was wiped out at the hands of uh, of, uh, of the of the Span of the Mexican federales. Wiped everybody out. There was nobody left. He was a medicine man at the time, but then he became so enraged with what he lost his whole family. Um, he vowed to take every uh, every uh, Mexican federally uh, out, and he did. His name is Gayacola, which means he who yawns. But he got the name Ga uh, Geronimo because every time he would go after a federally, he would drop down to his knees, and they would uh, the federalities would uh, pray to their patron saint, uh, 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 Santo Geronimo. So that's, that name stuck because as soon as they saw him, they would drop and pray. So that's where he got the name. And then he went into another situation where he was uh, fighting with the U.S. troops, American troops, the Blue Coats, the U.S. Cavalry. And, uh, and they were chasing him for many, many years. There was only a few of them left. I think it was only 12 uh, warriors. 
and they thought there was hundreds of them, but there wasn't that many. It was a handful. Uh, he surrendered because the, the, the warriors wanted to get united with their families. Well, they, were, they betrayed him because they told him they, was, they wouldn't take him back to his homeland, which they never did. They sent him to Florida, where a lot of us uh, Apaches passed away because we couldn't, the conditions were different. And that was the, and uh, 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 Cook is the one that made that deal. Well, Cook, when, uh, Cook was also, um, it wasn't him, it was his upper ups that broke the word with Geronimo. Geronimo, and, uh, because of the situation that we're going through, they were actually sent Geronimo back to Fort Seals, Oklahoma. That's where he died, and he died uh, riding his horse across the river. He never made it back home. Uh, he, he stayed at Fort Seals, Oklahoma. So, um, Hello, so that's um, so that's why we uh, uh, were kind of like disappointed because all we were given was empty promises. Empty promises. They were shutting our people up by giving them cough medicine, which wasn't cough medicine. It was actually um, alcohol and uh, opium that they were giving them because that was the only way to control them, and that was a horrible way to control them. And at one time they were uh, making, uh, they were sterilizing women so they couldn't have children. So it's a, it's, it's a tough story. What came out of it good in those times? Nothing came out, nothing good came out of it, nothing. Um, this didn't, things didn't start happening for our native people to I'm gonna say probably in the uh, mid 1900s. It's when you started seeing a change, you started seeing movements coming up. You started people starting to stand up to the government because we got tired of being controlled. We got tired of being told what you can do, what you can't do. We got tired of living on, uh, on what they call today a form of welfare. We didn't want to be part of that. We became a, a sovereign tribe because uh, Geronimo said something many years ago. We want our people to roam. We want our people to get out. We want our people to go wherever they want, whenever they want. As free Apache, you could do that. But if you're not in a free Apache or a solvent tribe, you'll never be able to do that. That's why we maintain our solvency to this day, because those were his wishes, and we respect that. Amazing, amazing. Because people don't realize that uh, the lot of freedom struggles have been celebrated in the world. Indian freedom struggle and many other freedom struggles have been celebrated in the world. But the struggle for freedom is still going on in this country. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the I always wrote, I wrote in my when I, I when I concluded my book, I said, colonization never ended. Mm. It's still continuing. It's not yes. ended yet, and people still want to control. In fact, the the colonization uh, pre 1945 was direct colonization. Post 1945 was through United Nations, through Commonwealth through French legion, legionnaires. This is the colonization still continuing. Like 14 African states are still colonized by French. Three territories in Africa are still colonized by Spain. And I do not understand why Britain still owns overseas territories in Caribbean, in Indian Ocean, and Pacific Islands. Like right. still there, still there. And I mean, uh, I mean you cannot, uh, escape the fact. But in the US, the struggle is still going on. And most of the Americans, I will say most of the Americans, not all the Americans, most of the Americans, I still believe that 40% Americans love the native culture and want America to have native flags. I'll say 40%. Uh, well, as natives, um, um, we're trying to, we're trying to, um, how can I say this? Uh, we're trying to control the situation that's, that's at hand right now with the fact that there's too much government and it's, uh, it's, they're not doing what they're supposed to do because we entrusted the United States government to take care of, of this land that belongs to the native people, our people, because we didn't mess it up. When they took over, everything was fine. We had plenty of food. We had plenty of natural resources. We had people that were willing to work and make their own uh, everything. I mean, there was nothing that we depended on. We depended on ourselves and only ourselves. And that was taken away. Why? For control. 
Well, we need to take not the control back. We need to take our, our culture back and, and share that culture so people understand that we're not going anywhere as a native community. We're working together to make this, to make this, uh, to make this country a better place to live not to make it worse like it right now it's really bad I, I just hope it takes a change and uh, and we owe as natives we owe it to our communities not just the native community but outside the native community we owe that to our land in no, general the world is looking for what you're offering the world is looking for it and the and, uh, and it's, it's, uh, it's not about the conservative versus liberal the, the issue is totally different we are neither conservative nor liberal Right. You know, we are we are neutral. We are asking commonsensical things that mm -hmm. uh, this country belongs, this land belongs to my ancestors. I mean, I'm yes. saying from your behalf, land belongs to those ancestors, and and it's for humanity. Now, religion is outside the view. Whether your political ideology, liberal versus conservative, I mean, believe me, for the viewers, whatever Tucker Carlson can say, but he doesn't know the history of this land, because what he talks about is from his Christian world and Christian, I mean, this is what Dr. Carlson can watch here and tell us. Because he is talking about his idea about the world, and I'm trying to discover this idea about the world, the natives who mm -hmm. define the identity. So, so the, uh, the, the media, which is mostly Anglo-Saxon media, will never cover our issues. Right. These issues will never cover, because they are heavily politicized. They are out of touch with reality, I would say. They don't understand the human aspect of it. You know, they will just talk about what Republicans did not do, and they will say what Democrats did not do, and we are out of that loop altogether. We're talking about human issues, where common sense is the rule. And, and you know, when people say nationalism in this country, you know, what you represent is nationalism here, mm -hmm. connected to the soil, connected to the culture of the natives, being protector of the land, be protector of the environment, be protector of the food. Right. Important, like the, most of the mental issues in this country are because of food, mm. food poisoning. And, and the doctors have played such a bad role. I mean, they have told everybody that cholesterol should not be above, uh, should not be above 150. Right. And the blood pressure should not be above 100. Humanly not possible, 19th century was not possible early 20th century not possible and pharmaceuticals in this country have destroyed the whole planet with the chemicals and chemicals and chemicals so what are the solutions that you offer uh, the only solution we have for that is just uh, working as a community and trying to get on the same page because right now we're not on the same page and all the harm that we're doing is uh, is not just to us but for generations that are being uh, right coming up on us you know so it's important that we start working with people and get and and get the message out, and the, and the people know that we're here. If you need help, you need questions answered. We're here to answer them for you. That's again, it boils back down to education. Education is very important for us to educate people about the dynamics of what this of of the native community. It's got wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, cultural ideas. It's got wonderful. Uh, uh, cultural ways of uh, integrating with people. We love kids. Children to us is the most important thing, uh, and we like to cater to our kids. Why? Because they're the ones that are going to teach others, and uh, we try to do that as best as we can. Uh, uh, we just did a, a La Paloma Elementary, uh, where our volunteers to read to the children are the elders from uh, uh, from uh, the Pala Reservation. So the elders are volunteering their time. Why? Because they want to get back to the community, uh, and this is a, a, and uh, and this is a, just a public school. But the the elders from uh, from that tribe from Pala are giving their time to help teach the kids. You know who does things like that to give their time up like that? That's how important the children. That's why it's important that we uh, that we you know we have the love and respect we should for the children. I know I watched the movie Pirates of the Caribbean and I like one dialogue. He says, take everything, give nothing back. That's right. And that's exactly happened in, in yeah. this scenario. But the, the thing which I also see is that the, the, the mindset 
is extremely important language culture history and and spirituality very important and spirituality the source of spirituality is the earth not the anything else is the earth and the because we live on earth we come from earth mm -hmm. our bodies are made of earth so the what aspects of the education do you think is needed that that the there is a political awareness number 1 there is a socio economic awareness and also the new opportunities with this uh, the constitution of the united states or something which offers over there can be utilized to bring back what we our ancestors lost well um well the socio economics is the first one that you gave me um is again uh letting people uh be uh, letting people do what they feel is right for them who are we to dictate what kind of social uh life they should be living we have to teach them to uh, to be uh to do what's right as far as becoming successful and as for and so they could be more productive and more uh successful in life that's the only way we could teach them we can't teach them to just settle for nothing we got to teach them and guide them and what was the other one and the the socio economic and the the cultural and religious aspects uh the the religious aspect and also the funding from the court, federal that's what federal the, funding the, the federal the funding use, utilizing the resources offered by USA today okay. to enhance the potential for these people well um uh, that's uh, okay well for us we don't want federal assistance for anything because uh our, our our social background is being free our social our background is not to take nothing from any federal agency we want to be a solvent a solvent people why do you think so why it cannot help uh because Does it come with conditions uh, uh because there's strings attached to it ah there's too many strings attached and we don't want those strings attached to us we don't want people uh because you start getting the federal government involved in in the native in the native world so they treat us totally different from any other I group. see that I totally know, different I, I know that and the difference is that we're uh we're like third fourth class citizens we're not even second we're third or fourth class citizens so what do I have to, what do we have to gain working with the federal government nothing you are going to get you know you are going to get the minimum because they're not in the business to give you the th what you think you're going to get no you're not I mean, they've broken every minimum. single federal promise in 1783 well when you see that uh that uh that uh interview at Pine Ridge uh in the Dakotas you're going to see what I'm talking about they're they have uh, they're under they're under federal guidelines they're under the, and you'll see it right there they're going to tell you they're under the BIA and the BLM you're going to see what they're going through they're going to see how they live you uh, uh, by the end of that interview that you're going to see your heart's going to melt because you i uh, i can't believe people live like that uh it's worse than any third world country but people are trying on those on those on those on that reservation you got a lot of alcoholism i got a lot of drug abuse uh you got a, just people there's kids dropping out of school left and right there's just so many things that are that are not good there that um your heart goes out to them and the thing is the only way to take care of that that social part of it is to get those kids out and introduce them to uh, to the real to real society and to help them get uh involved in different avenues of what's available to them they just don't know what's available to them because it's not to the benefit to uh to the government to educate them it's it's more like they want to keep them where they're at I mean it's very striking for me that uh, that people we have to stay away from all the federal which is not available to be with strings attached and the well, can you imagine if you had all the native community educated can you imagine what would happen if everybody had some kind of a degree or some kind of a skill or I mean that's empowerment and that empowerment is not going to happen unless we show them how to get empowered because the federal government is not going to do that what are they scared of sorry what are they scared of 
um, control. They're afraid that they're going to lose control once people find out what's really going on and, you know, how, uh, how they're being really treated. Nobody knows how these people are living. The only reason, the, the, if you see this segment on, on Facebook, that was an interview that some gentleman that does freelancing went and did because he felt, he saw it for his own eyes. So he went up to the elders and asked if he could do an interview. They gave him permission to go into the reservation, as you'll see. And he did, and he was just, he couldn't believe it. He couldn't believe what he was filming. And it was all him by himself with different, he was talking to different tribal children and or teenagers and young adults. I think he spoke to two elders, but they all have the same thing. We're dying out here. The government don't care about us. We're just here, and we're trying to coexist, and we can't. And it's a younger gentleman. He's probably about 21, and he's the one that's, you know, doing the tour. You know, U.S. State Department, and I have serious questions on the U.S. State Department all the time, and I'm very open about it. I write openly on that. Gives the, all the world the lectures on human rights. Mm -hmm. Everybody gives lectures to India, to China, to Russia, and they complain about, and now they are giving lectures to Bangladesh mm. on human rights. And how did they, the, the U.S. State Department or USCIRF, United States International Religious Freedom, gives lectures to all over the world about how they should live their life, and they miss out such an important thing within USA. And Christy Noem, the governor, you know, I've seen that so many reports of hers trying to authorize federal police or state police to go into the lands and create passages through there. How, how did they miss out? What is why did they miss out? I have no idea. I wish I had an answer for that. Just so many things are happening around us that it's hard to keep up with everything. But, you know, again, it's all politics. It's not for the betterment of the people. When do you ever hear a politician ever, uh, ever speak about the native community or native people? Never. Never. Neither do we. I never. never. It's always about uh, it's always about different different ethnic groups, but it's, they never involve the native people. Never. We we've been here. And not in the we're not still even here. Entire like I've been part of so many election cycles. Not a single time I mentioned about the real issues in this country. Mm -hmm. See, it's like uh, even though we are a big part of this community of all communities because we're everywhere. Um, and that was that was uh, uh, that was part of what our our uh, our uh, what do you call it our uh, solvency is is that we could go anywhere we want in the United States. We have two chiefs in the tribe, myself and then Louis Vasquez. We Louis Vasquez covers everything from uh, Arizona all the way to Juarez. I cover everything from uh, from what it, from uh, uh, California all the way to the Canadian border and to the sides of it. He was my vice chief, but I made him into my second chief because it's too much territory for me. Because we get a lot of people, yes, a lot of territory. So I asked him if he could help me. So I, I needed him as a second chief to cover that part of the territory. And uh, it took him a little bit to say yes, but finally he understood and he said, yeah, let's do it. And so that's, I don't, he takes care of that part, I take care of this part. But we're growing really big in California because you have a lot of, uh, you have the bigger tribes up in the, in the west. You have the Navajos, you have the Comanche, you have the Mascaleros, you have the, the White Mountain Apache, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, you also have the Lipan tribe is also up that way. So here in California, they never had representation. So what we did, when, uh, what I did many years ago, I was working with the native community, and, uh, and what I did is I started representing the native people here in California, and we just grew out of nowhere. So we're still, we're still continuing, continuing with our growth. And they didn't have the representation or the knowledge. A lot of our citizens didn't, uh, didn't even know they were Apache they, or native or any kind of native background. So I encourage everybody that if you think you're native and you want to know more about your, uh, about your roots, take a DNA test and go through Ancestors DNA and you can reach us at our website and our website's right there on the wall and we'll give you more information. If you want guidance, we'll give it to you. That's what we're here for, is to help people uh, find the roots. Yeah, I will also share with the uh, viewers also that I'll share you all the links so you can connect Thank directly you. to the community as well. 
and if you want to sponsor anything then you're welcome to do that and we as Satology would like to be involved in the education space we are in the education yes. space where we want to teach or, or a history from your version point of view right or our version point of view so I, it's very interesting to know the territory division does it go all the way to Alaska uh, yeah, in fact, my <coughs> wife and I just came back from Alaska. We were with some wonderful people that are from the Trinket tribe. And uh, very I would humble. like to travel with you next time. Uh, yeah, it's, we just got back. It was wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And uh, very nice people, very uh, welcoming. And, uh, I, I have nothing but good to say about it, but they have control of Alaska. The Trinket tribe, which are from uh, native Alaskans, uh, they have uh, the uh, government the Alaskan government has a lot of respect for them and they help them tremendously unlike here in, the, in here in California we don't have that kind of support you know what's really ironic that when the pilgrims came into this country and it's uh, and they landed right and uh, and uh, did you go to the point where they landed first in Alaska yeah well, they know they when they landed or well, the, the what happened was the pilgrims were dying because they didn't know how to survive in this harsh land. So the natives taught them how to, how to survive. They didn't know, because the stuff they brought with them. I mean, Pilgrim is here. a very euphemistic way to say that the right. sick and exterminated or uh, uh, people who are thrown out of the country. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, they brought pigs and stuff like that, but they didn't know how to grow rice and, or, or uh, should I say corn or anything like that, things that you needed to survive in a whole different country. Some of the things that they brought wouldn't grow here. They just die and die. So the native people taught them how to grow things. If it wasn't for that, they, wouldn't, they would never have survived. But that's how giving the native people are. They give back. They, give, they don't want nothing in return. When I give, I don't want nothing in return. I give from my heart. Not to expect something from you. Most native people are like that. I mean, I, just by sitting with you, I can feel that if I need something, I'll be, you'll be always there for me. Just by, always. I'm just yeah. feeling for it. You know? And we are like that. We are like that. Yeah, and, and that's that's the advantage many people took, actually, in the past. We give more and expect nothing, and we don't expect anything. We just want, uh, we just want friendship. We just want to, you know, uh, coexist. I mean, this goodness was exploited by all the European colonial powers. Yeah. Right. The well, same story happened in... Barbados, same story happened in Mexico, same story happened in all the lands. Right. Well, in, in, even in India, same story happened. They were welcomed initially. Well, in some parts of Spain, I can't go because they, they don't like natives. They don't even mind right, uh, like Mexicans too. Yeah. Mexicans say they're Hispanic, but they don't like them over there. No, they don't they like call them. them <laughs> all racist words over there. Because they're mestizos, they're, they're, they're saying you're a mix, and you know, you, we don't have time for mixes over here. I mean, the, I, what I have documented also is that the, the native men, Indios, in Mexico were not allowed to marry a European women. Right. Oh, that's true. They're the only reverse way allowed. The, the European men can marry Indio women. Right. But Peninsulares could not. No, be. no. No. But it, it's just like the, uh, it's just like the, what do you call it, the, uh, uh, the uh, American, La American Me Mexican, uh, Mexican, uh, yeah, the American Mexican, American Latino, they go to Mexico and they're not treated like a Hispanic person. They don't like them because they're Americans, and that's what no, you're American. So no, I have no problem. They, I call them. I'm muy indio. I'm the original. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> And then they come here, and then our government don't like them because, no, you're Mexican. Wait a minute. No, I'm not from Mexico. I'm not. I'm an American. So they're kind of stuck in between. Well, who, what am I? You know, that's why we have to change the narrative, you know, and label them for what they really are. And, we, yeah, as natives, we don't have a problem. Uh, I, I, there's some places I will go someplace, not because I'm, a, I'm worried about that or not, just some places that I just don't want to go. Um, we got too much work to do here. We really too do. We've got to keep going with it. So, viewers, this is the third set of the interview, and we covered a little bit about the, the religion, culture, and a fabulous story. And we'll cover more in the subsequent discussions with the chief, and also from, from his expanded community. Do you want to say any message? Because a lot of people love you right now. I can see the feedback for the last interview. I'd like to say directly to something to the audience. Uh, audience, thank you for uh, being patient with me. and. Uh, and thank you for taking the time to listen to this podcast. Thanks to Adi and, uh, and everyone here. 
And Alaka says, uh, let's, let's work together to make it a better place, and let's work together to educate each other. No matter who or what you are, you know, there's always room for improvement. And, I'm, you know, I learn every day, and I try to improve every day, and I try to lead by example. And the example I'm trying to uh, give you now is that it's never too late to change, it's never too late to improve, and most importantly, reach out to those that are in need because everyone has someone that knows they need something. Help them out. Make them your friend, and you'll be surprised how your heart's going to warm up, and that's going to carry on for many, many years. But I love you guys all. Thank you again, and God bless you all. Thank you. Do like, share, subscribe, and let people know about this podcast, and I'll see you in the next show.